Hi, this is Rob from SeeHowToDo.com. Before we start the video, we'd like to thank you for watching. We'd also like to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share on social media, and visit us at SeeHowToDoIt.com. Today we're going to show you how to connect a water bleed off on your swamp cooler. This will help prevent a lot of buildup on the inside of the swamp cooler that will eventually pretty much rust it out and ruin your whole swamp cooler, the pads, the media, everything. So let's get started. Okay, here's our swamp cooler pump here. And there's two ways of going about this. Some swamp cooler pumps will already have a bleeder valve on them, or some you might have to add one. This particular one does have a bleeder on them, so we're going to show you both ways how to do it. So here's our bleeder right over here. We're going to go ahead and remove this cap by sliding it off. And then you're going to need some quarter inch irrigation line that you can get at pretty much any home improvement store, which is this right over here. So we're going to go ahead and tilt our pump a little bit up here and then we're going to go ahead and slip this hose right into that hole and it might be a little bit tough to put it in there at first which this one is a little bit okay it's going in there now which is a little bit hard to see you can see it's in there you don't want to make sure it's firmly seated in there otherwise when you turn on the pump it might pop out so we have it in there now so we're going to go ahead and place our pump back into the basket and we're going to run this quarter inch irrigation line out through our drain plug. So we'll go over to the other side of the swamp cooler. Okay, this is our drain plug right over here. We're going to actually run the irrigation tubing right down our drain plug here. And we'll pull it out the bottom. And pretty much this end, you could either run it into a drain or you could run it into your landscaping but pretty much what we're gonna do is you might want to tie a knot into this tubing to restrict some of the flow otherwise you're gonna use way too much water and you don't need to bleed off that much or you could even connect an irrigation fitting on the tip of it over here but you definitely want to restrict it a little bit otherwise you're really gonna see a big difference on your water bill now we're gonna go ahead and show you another way of connecting a bleed if your pump doesn't already have a valve on it Okay, we're going to go back to our swamp cooler pump over here, and pretty much if yours doesn't have the bleeder valve, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our line over here. Yours might possibly have a hose clamp. If it does have a hose clamp, go ahead and remove your hose clamp here. This one doesn't, so we're going to go ahead and slip it off. This way will make it a little bit easier. So now we're going to let that go, and we're going to go to the other side of the swamp cooler. Okay, here's our hose right over here. Pretty much whatever you have to cut it with, the razor blade, scissors. So we're going to go ahead and cut it over here. And then from there, you're going to want to go to your local store and pick up a bleed tee. Okay, this is what it comes with. It comes with a bleed tee, as you can see right here, and two hose clamps. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Put on the hose clamp first, uh, get out yourself a pliers or whatever you have to pinch it with. Be careful because these do have a habit of trying to go flying as you put them on. So we'll go ahead and pinch it to open it up there and we'll go ahead and slip it on. Once you have that slipped on, we'll go ahead and slip on our T. And if your hose is cold, this might be a little bit difficult. This wasn't too bad. You could always put it outside and warm it up a little bit if it's not already outside and we'll go ahead and Pinch this again to bring it back down to our T. Okay, you want it about right there, and we're going to repeat the same process for the bottom of the hose. Okay, we went ahead and pinched our hose clamp, and now we're going to go ahead and slip our hose in here. And now we're ready to put it back into the T. We want to make sure it's firmly seated in there. Go ahead and pinch our hose clamp. And yes, these are hard to work with. If it's too hard, you could always go to the store and get regular hose clamps that you tighten down with a screwdriver. It might be a little bit easier, but this is what it comes with. Almost. All 
All right, and that's good there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and connect the other end back to our pump. All right, we have our hose here. And if you have a hose clamp, you're gonna put it back on there. This one doesn't, so we're gonna slip that in there. And now we're ready to go ahead and connect our irrigation line. Okay, this might be a little bit hard to see, but here's the tip of our T, and we're gonna go ahead and connect our quarter inch irrigation line the same way as we did on the pump. We'll go ahead and slip it on there. Like I said, it might be a little bit hard to see here, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's firmly seated as it is there, and we're gonna go ahead and run this other end out of our drain plug. Okay, we'll go ahead and run this out of our drain plug, and you wanna make sure the quarter inch irrigation line is out of the way of any moving parts. All right, so now we have it ran through there, and once again, you're gonna to wanna to connect uh, a fitting on the end of this irrigation fitting or put a knot in it to restrict the water flow because otherwise you're going to notice a big difference on your water bill and you definitely don't want that. Once again, we'd like to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share on social media and visit us at seehowtodoit.com. Thank you.